Well, welcome back to my channel, guys. Um, I went out and bought a Harbor Freight Flux 125 welder to test. Um, I'm going to do a whole series of videos on this, uh, different aspects. This first one is going to be unboxing and maybe a little quick test to make sure it works. Um, after that, we'll have some welding tests. Uh, I plan to do a thorough test of its duty cycle, the actual amperage output, um, the actual voltage outputs, uh, both on min and max. Uh, I want to do a comparison with a DC flux core welder. So I'm going to compare it to my Tweco Fabricator 141i um, just to see the difference in the welds. Uh, we'll use the exact same wire. All that will be coming up in, in future videos. Uh, just keep in mind, I am not a welder. Uh, you can go back and look and see. I've taught myself how to weld using YouTube videos and filmed quite a bit of it on this channel. Uh, so anyway, we're gonna today we're gonna unbox this and see what's what's inside. I I have a pretty good idea what's inside already, but and there's about a dozen, well probably a hundred of these unboxing videos of this, the 90 amps version of this on the web. So be that exciting. But let's get to it. Oh, I'm also going to do a comparison of all the specs between the 125 and the 90 amp. Uh, just to see if there really is any difference. Alright, your manual, first of all. This top part contains the handle. Uh, handle for the face shield, your little uh, chipping hammer, wire brush combo, the glass for the face shield, and a roll of, should be Harbor Freight. It's not even Harbor Freight brand, it's just cheap E71T. GS flux core welding wire with no brand name whatsoever, no country of origin, anything. Lovely stuff. Let's get that up. up here. Oh, also a contact tip. That's the 030 contact tip and screws for the handle. Let's get this tray up out of here. Styrofoam is busted. Let's sit down over here. Set this down on the ground. Lift this welder up out of here. And uh, down here in the bottom, of course, is the face shield. We're not going to bother with that. I'm not even going to bother pulling that out. Plastic off the welder. Now they've made many, many different versions of the uh, 90 amp. We had the old orange ones, the blue ones, and then the black ones, and there are lots of versions of each of those. You can check the there's a bunch of different item numbers. Lots of changes through the years. Alright, All right, let's get the uh, lid open and get the handle put on. Punctured through the name, but it's the 030 Lincoln Inner Shield NR211 MT. The good stuff. My favorite flux color wire. So 
I don't know if you can see that, but in here it says it's good for 18 gauge to 3 16 uh, We're going to initially try welding with these settings and see what we get. problem with the Lincoln. It doesn't like to bend. It fractures before it bends. All right, let's check this out. It's set up from the factory for 030 with the feed roller. The tip In the gun is also O three O. I'm not going to be using the gas nozzle because this will never use gas. So I'm just going to treat this with some uh, anti splatter gel and uh, call it good. So I've removed the tip in preparation for the feeding. Hold her out. Then ground clamp. Wonderful little instructions on each one of these cables. <laughs> Connect to workpiece. Remove tip before feeding new wire through. Yeah, I can see why people complain about this. It's really loose and uh, flimsy, but that can be upgraded. We'll see what we get with it. Straighten, feed it through here. Now it's going to have to sit over here on the ground, I think. Set this up here where everybody can see it. Well, we got a fan noise. Let's see if we can feed some wire. So I just went ahead and coated this whole thing with some nozzle gel. So 
batter the splatter doesn't stick to it. Alright. What do you say? You get out a little scrap piece here. Alright, this is a piece I've done a lot of practice welding on. Clean up the end here with a wire brush. And All right, so this stuff is eighth inch wall square tubing. So the recommended settings for eighth inch on this would be max with a wire speed of eight. So we're gonna try their recommended settings. We'll see what happens. Attach this ground clamp directly to the workpiece. Make sure it's got a good connection. Setting on my helmet. That went much better than I expected. Wow. Um, let's see if I can get you a close-up of this. So that's the, the weld as it laid down. Let's get that cleaned up. And let's see. focus there alright not too bad I mean it's not great I see what well, looks like a little bit of porosity in there but all in all not too bad you can see the heat affected zone is clear back here and on the end here you know from what I'd seen uh, I expected that to be much worse. There's not nearly as much spatter as I would have expected. Let's try another one. We'll lay one. We'll lay one right next to that one. that there was a little hiccup at the end that's my fault um, the wire sprung on me when I was putting it in uh, it was looped through here the tip of the wire that was looped through there fractured like flux core tends to do when it's bent and the thing unspooled so I just rewound what was there so I'd have test wire um, so that was my fault so if there's a little defect at the end that's that's completely my fault but it actually was welding really well yeah, um, when it hiccuped at the end, it threw a little splatter. Um, come on, focus. But you can see, you know, there's there's the hiccup at the end. It hiccuped about here and through there. There was some splatter it threw up when it did, but that actually was laying down really well. I'm pleasantly surprised. Uh, anyway, from my initial impression, thumbs up for what you pay for it. Uh, I'm very impressed. I am not a good welder by any stretch of the imagination, so if I can pick it up and lay down beads like that, pretty good. 
I would say one to keep your stick out short. So I was keeping it in there. I don't know if you could see that, but I was really keeping it in there. That it helps to have the, the nozzle off. Because if you have the nozzle all the way on like it's supposed to be, that tip is at least a quarter, maybe three eighths of an inch back up in that gun. So your stick out is already that much. Then you can't see what you're doing if you're right down in there, so people tend to hold it out even further, which gives you too much stick out. Actually, let's do a test weld like that. Let's see what happens, shall we? We'll lay it down right next to that one. I can already tell it's not going down as well. But it's not bad. Let's clean that up. It, it definitely had a hard time getting the heat in at the start of the weld. It did not want to puddle very fast that way. But, you know, it, it settled down and did okay. I made an effort to shorten up the, the stick out some more. If you get that stick out just a little too long, it's not happy. It doesn't do as good of a job. So, it's a little warm. Not too bad. Leave that off. Trim your wire short. I'm probably running with maybe a three eighths of an inch stick out. Seems to run pretty good. All right. So the initial unboxing review. Um. I'm actually impressed. Uh, it, I mean, it's cheap. There's no getting around that. It's not top quality. It does not come with a lot of settings. I have yet to to try it on thinner stuff. We'll do a full weld test here in another video. But initial impressions, it's not bad. It's it's perfectly serviceable for uh, for the home hobbyist. Uh, 